America, cops are in the news because they are the story. I'm Molly Thomas in Erbil, Iraq. They were telling us about the days just after the attack. The fear levels were just so high. Bloomberg, Fox, New York Times, Politico, they all went with Clinton at least three points ahead. Social justice just at the heart of everything Pope Francis had to say today. There is no drug cure, but you say there is a human cure. That was metric. Of course, it's still electric down here. 702, we start with some breaking news. Breaking news at this hour. 819, some breaking news for you. And we are watching, of course, that number on the bottom of your screen. Electoral College votes right now sitting at 136 to 104 for Donald Trump. Um, again, you have to get 270 to seal the deal for the next president of the United States. Um, we're talking a little bit about our swing states, of course. Those are the ones that could go either way, and they're easy to flip-flop. So what we know right now, the ones that are leaning towards Trump, Florida, North Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, very, very close race there, but it's still leaning towards Trump a bit. Ohio as well. The swing states that are leaning towards Clinton right now, Pennsylvania and Colorado. Okay. I have also promised you that we would talk about the X factor state in this election. I'm not sure if you guessed it at home, but let's take a look at that right now. We're talking about the Sunshine State, Florida, of course. Florida is no ordinary state. It is not. It is consistently voted for the winning presidential candidate all but one year all but one year since 1964. We have some breaking news for you right now. We are gonna go to a Skype look right now at an area near Azusa, which is just outside of Los Angeles. So there are reports right now of an active shooter that is outside of that area. Of course, you are watching uh, election coverage 2016 on Yes TV. If you are just tuning in, we wanted to bring you this breaking update. Um, as we've been telling you throughout the evening, there's been a shooting in the last hour near a polling station in Azusa, which is a suburb of Los Angeles, California. Now, what we do know is that there's one person that has been killed and at least two people right now that are injured. We just got a clip in from the acting chief of police, uh, Captain Stephen Hunt. Let's go to that right now and see what he has to say. Uh, Molly, you've learned that actually the media had a very large role who even got to enter the race. Well, it was interesting. I looked at the Harvard Kennedy Shorenstein study and it, and it looked at coverage before we're even at this point. I mean, it looked at pre-primary coverage and primary coverage. And if you look, there was an unusual amount of coverage on Trump himself in that pre-primary primary period and most of it was positive in tone. And you looked at as well at Hillary Clinton. Most of it was negative, but she also had more coverage than any other Democratic nominee. So you look at this and you have to wonder, you know, are we actually choosing, we, I mean, Americans actually choosing who they're, they're bringing into those presidential nominee spots or is the media serving it to us on a platter? The West is a tough political playground for the liberals. How do you target seniors? your voters, the people that are constantly going to the polls that perhaps may be set in a conservative mindset? Well, I think well, one of the things that we're seeing is people are a lot less uh, branded to particular parties than they, than they once were. Young people, the younger, younger generation, I can, see, I can see the appeal that they have for you. I, how do you get them to the polls, though? Because well, they traditionally don't vote. Yeah. Let's quickly touch on that, your abortion stance. I mean, you want your MPs to all vote pro-choice. Mm -hmm. Isn't that impeding on their freedom of thought, their freedom of belief, their freedom of opinion, some of those values that your father brought into the charter? Minister Norris came out quite candidly on the subject. I was listening to an interview on, on John Gormley. He said the Buckingham debacle was one of the worst decisions in Canadian Academy. A little harsh from, I mean, a minister that's handling the file? Well, he was very, you know, he wanted to be emphatic about the government's concern for what had happened there and the need to now have a path forward. Do you want your minister speaking that candidly, I guess? That's a pretty bold statement. I want us to get results. Our correspondent Molly Thomas is back from being in Paris. Molly, tell us about walking the streets there at a time like that. I would describe it as somber but at the same time lively. I mean, on the somber side, you can't miss the flowers, the tributes, um, the pictures that show up at these memorials in District 10 and 11. You walk by, I mean, people, even on their way to work, will just stop and take a moment. But at the same time, when it's lively. I mean, part of uh, French culture is to be out at cafes, it's to have a drink on a patio. People are still out and about. And I think the tough thing about talking about France is that Paris is the tourism capital of the world. And so you have, there. everybody's yeah. there. So it's really tough sometimes when you're out in the streets to figure out who's Parisian and who's not, who's affected and who's not. It was quite a sweeping speech, Lorna. Pope Francis addressed more than 100 heads of state 
in just under 45 minutes. And he had a lot to say to the international community, but at the heart of every single issue that he touched on was this cry for social justice. Pope Francis pointed out that we live in a widespread culture of waste, and uh, he said we are abusing God's loving creation. And I mean, it fits perfectly into the sustainable development framework. Of course, uh, goals number 13, 14, and 15 all revolve around climate change and preserving the ecosystem. So um, he's speaking the same language as the world leaders here. In North America, when we heard about Ebola, I mean, it's you and Dr. Kent Brantley that most people will think of first. Yeah. I just want to weep for this man who was just trying to support his family. It's not what you'd expect from a place like this. There are dark stories spilling out of wine country. They're talking about workers that are falling through the cracks of our healthcare system. And we're asking, who's responsible? The boss didn't say that he's not pleased, but actions speak louder than words. The next year, then four guys didn't make it back for the job. Those are the guys who speak up and say it was too cold, so they decided to quit. Some migrant workers support up to eight people back in Jamaica. For many of them, these jobs provide their children with a future. So you're performing tonight, big performance coming up? I am, I am. I'm really excited about it, actually. Any hints for us? Because we know your big song, Call Me Maybe, but is it going to be in rendition or something different? I will say that style-wise, I was kind of inspired by, like, Cyndi Lauper. Mary of course, Trench walking up. Marianne Trench, we are uh, live right now. We're, we're live, live. uh-uh. So we are live, don't swear. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm here with Tatiana Maslany, of course, the star of Orphan Black, right? Yeah. Hometown is Regina. Yeah, that's right. You're away from Regina a lot of the time. How do you stay connected? Uh, Facebook, Skype, Skype. Skype is amazing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it really is. It really the influx is. of Iraqi IDPs and Syrian refugees is not just a humanitarian crisis, it's really an economic one. The Kurdistan regional government says it's seen a 28% population boom since 2012. So think of all the people that need medical supplies, food, shelter, even jobs. Now this has more than doubled the poverty rate in the KRI. It's also slowed economic growth by 5%. The government says it needs 1.4 billion this year alone to stabilize that economy. Outside the Kurdistan region of Iraq, the Peshmerga, or Kurdish freedom fighters, are holding off ISIS. Canada has 69 members of the special forces on the ground training these troops. But they can't stop the pain that's already passed through these borders. <laughs> you may not see it on the faces of the children, but in Saddam's eyes, you know something haunts him. Tell me about your son. Twenty-seven-year-old Sarah Ahmed is a Muslim dentist whose own life has been forever altered by this war. It's gotten smaller. It's gotten smaller now with medicine and visiting the doctors and giving him medicine, but it's still there. Like many young professionals, Sarah is based in Baghdad. She expected to work in her own dentistry clinic, that is, until she saw the suffering. Okay. When I first came to this camp, it was empty. A day after I came to this camp where it was empty, there was about 10,000 people in this camp. 10,000 in one day. In one day. Canada reconfirmed Haiti as a focus country this year. However, funding has not been committed yet. Do you think Haiti will always be dependent on countries like Canada? I have to ask though, I mean, we, you're saying you were at the stadium, that's where a lot of the international leaders came to remember the 20 years of the genocide. I mean, as a Rwandan, is it also frustrating to see that people are there now, but they weren't there before? Well, deadly violence broke out between rival militias vying for control of Libya's main airport. This was a scene not far from Tripoli's international airport. Now, today's fighting has killed six people and injured dozens more. All flights have been cancelled in that area. Libyan authorities have struggled to bring stability to the country since dictator Muammar Gaddafi was toppled three years ago. Um, I'm seeing lots of young people gathering around. We obviously have lots of uh, young men around us right now. But even with all these considerations, university students are not a target demographic. According to UN population counts, 18 to 59-year-olds are all lumped together in one giant category. 
It makes it hard to even tell how many students are suffering. What we do know is that at least half of all Syrian refugees are under the age of 18, foreshadowing a generation of lost scholars down the road. We seem happy and we keep a smile, but inside we are all sad. 612, let's go over to BNN. Patty Lovett Reed standing by. Patty, everyone in Saskatchewan that is hoping to buy a home this year, waiting on this interest rate decision today. <laughs> Fire officials say the wind really worked in their favor today. As you can see, that smoke is moving towards the southeast. That's away from the apartment building on the other side, away from businesses on that strip, and moving towards the industrial area of town. In Ottawa, it's not a regular day on the hill. The Senate usually does not sit on Fridays, but today, in light of possible suspensions and the ongoing debate, senators are already at work. Debate is going on right now. CTV's parliamentary correspondent, Mercedes Stevenson, is in the midst of it. She joins us from Ottawa today. Good morning, Mercedes. 609. Well, as authorities look for clues into the cause of the deadly Quebec train derailment, the fire officials and the railway company are now blaming each other for the disaster. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, especially if you're not from a minority here in Canada, you know, you, you don't think it exists. Growing up with racism in Saskatchewan and Regina is just a daily, it's daily. Has anyone surprised you, Jacqueline, though? On, on the flip side of that, of maybe you thought they would be coming at you maybe harsher and they, they completely surprised you or apologized. I've never been apologized to. Let's talk about your family. Yes. Uh, you're married to a staff sergeant. Yes. So also on the RCMP. Yeah. Who outranks who? Can I ask that question? <laughs> I outrank him. <laughs> uh, yes. How does that work? I mean, um, Who's the boss at home? You might call the Lady Cougars a dynasty, the kind of team that makes you cringe when you see them on the schedule. A force to be reckoned with in the late 90s, since 2001 alone, nine trips to the national championships. That win stems from years of tradition, women that trailblazed the way back in the 70s. Everything looks different, and they got the long socks. Long, that was yeah, the long style. socks, long sleeves. What the heck are these? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're for they're for practice shorts. And down he goes. Jeff Knox Jr. adds to his tackle total. A big field for a big time player. In his first season with the green and white, Jeff Knox Jr. is turning heads. He's already broken the Rough Riders tackle record. He's also had three CFL nods for the biggest awards of the year. But this beast on the field is quite humble in real life. Seventh tackle of the night for Jeff Knox Jr. A little bit of a dream? Oh, more than a dream. More than a dream. <laughs> more than a dream to me. The pride of the North. The Toronto Raptors are warming up right behind me in this space. I mean, it's all about one sport, basketball, of course. But what about life beyond basketball? We talked to a few key members of the Raptors organization to find out more. I have a little nickname for you here, Cash Money. Uh -oh. Have you heard that one before? <laughs> Cashmere! <laughs> Did you guys call each other to match this morning? This just keeps happening yeah, and I like, don't understand. How do you look exactly the same? <laughs> what are you looking at? Honestly, we need to know. Warm temperatures. I'm talking 30s. I'll have all those details coming up. Beach weather. Oh yeah! Get out the Speedo! <laughs> oh, yeah. Woo! Never the Speedo carry. Never the speedo. 710 this morning. Let's check in with our business dude over at BNN. <laughs> Michael, of course, called me dudette in our last hit. So, hey, dude, what's going on? <laughs> well, well, I'm looking at very good. You, 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 I like you. You know, some guys just have that thing. I think Robin Thicke has that thing. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's not talk about it anymore. Okay, then. Let's go to break. <laughs> Stay with us. Back in a second. <laughs>